هذا الصرح العلمي العظيم الجامعة الأردنية منارة العلم في الأردن والوطن العربي تحية إجلال وإكبار لقائد المسيرة جلالة الملك عبد الله الثاني أطال الله في عمره وسدد على دروب الخير خطاه وتحية إجلال وإكرام لجلالة الملك الملكة رانيا عبد الله راعية مسيرة تطوير التعليم في الأردن طوبى لذكرى مؤسس الأردن وباني هذه الجامعة طوبى لروحه الطاهرة جلالة الملك الحسين المعظم وتحية إجلال وإكبار لسمو الأميرة سمية بنت الحسن وتحية إجلال وإكبار للمشارك في في بناء المسيرة سمو الأمير الحسن المعظم نحييكم جميعا في هذا الوطن العزيز ونرحب بكم في هذا اليوم التربوي العظيم البروفيسور جوزيف رنزولي لن أتحدث عن مآثره الأكاديمية وتعريفه واضح لكن يريد أن أقول أعتز ما حييت أنني طالبة رنزولي وأعتز بأن أقول أن التميز التربوي والإبداع بدأ من دائرة رنزولي في ولاية كنتيكت إنه العالم الأول والأخير الذي تحدث عن تكامل التعليم نادى ببرنامج الإثراء المدرسي الشامل وأول من نادى في تميز التعليم في العالم مدرسته قائمة ومنتشرة في كل أرجاء الكرة الأرضية لقد قاد تميز التعليم في الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية في القرن الماضي وسيقوده هذا القرن أمد الله في عمره ومتعه بالصحة والعافية وستبقى أفكاره لعصور وليس لعقود قادمة نعتز به جميعا كعالم طور التعليم على وجه هذه الكرة الأرضية فلنحييه جميعا Uh, good morning. It is a truly a great honor and a great pleasure for me to be here in your beautiful country and the center of the world civilization, uh, especially uh, to be introduced by uh, Dr. Nadia, who, is one of my, who was my first uh, international doctoral student, and I'm very proud of the wonderful work that she has done uh, in the Middle East, uh, and also the work that I continue to do with my good friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Tasir Yamansupi. Uh, Tasir and I have worked together for many, many years, uh, and I will be sharing some of my work uh, with you this morning. I think that the message that Her Royal Highness delivered is an ever so important message. The, the uh, prosperity of a nation, the growth of a culture of a nation is dependent upon our investment in its human capital. And I will try to make some suggestions this morning about the ways that you can develop the giftedness and the creativity of young people in your country and other countries that are represented here today. Um, there are two, res uh, I will be mentioning uh, lots of research that we have done over the years uh, to support and verify this work. Uh, the first website at the, uh, on the screen is my University of Connecticut website where you will find all of the research that relates to the ideas that I will be sharing today. I do not believe in, in sharing practical information unless there is a good, strong research background behind it. The second website is the uh, new uh, online technology-based program that we use to uh, implement some of my ideas. Uh, please forgive the title. I did not name it. The University of Connecticut owns it and named it, and that's how it became Renzulli Learning. Um, I will try very hard to follow this outline this morning. Uh, covering an overview of school-wide enrichment and the Renzulli learning system, some of the theoretical and research background, and then finally, uh, some of the more practical aspects of the work. Uh, I always prepare an outline uh, whenever I give a, a speech, but uh, sometimes I don't follow it too carefully. But that's what I'm going to try to follow this morning. Um, I'd like to first of all deal with who we're dealing with, what students we're dealing with in our work. 
Uh, obviously, there is a great concern for uh, highly gifted students, the top 5% students who do well on IQ scores and do well academically. However, in the school-wide enrichment model, we are also interested in the group, the 15 or 20% below the top 5%, in many countries, this is, in fact, students who are uh, capable of going to four-year colleges, even very competitive colleges, and so there is a focus uh, on that group in our work as well. I also believe that even in the general population, we see some small dots here spread around the screen in different places. There are youngsters in that general population who also may have unrecognized potential. And so school-wide enrichment does not say everyone is gifted. What it says is that we must give opportunities to more youngsters to find out if there are gifts that may emerge if we provide them with the right opportunities, resources, and encouragement. Um, it is in this group, in my country, uh, where the highest potential of low-income and minority students come from. These are all students clearly capable of going on to higher education and even to graduate post-baccalaureate work, but oftentimes they don't get the opportunities because they do not score well on tests. And so one of the things we'll talk about is things other than tests that we should be looking at to give students uh, opportunities. Um, there are two theories underlying my work, which I will cover in greater detail. One is called the three-ring conception of giftedness. There is an, are articles about this on my website. The other, a related theory, is called the enrichment triad model, the kinds of things that we do to develop giftedness in young people. The organizational plan is called the school-wide enrichment model. Our theme is applying the pedagogy of gifted education to enrichment opportunities for all students. Again, this is not to say that I've said all students are gifted, but I am saying that we need to give opportunities to see if, in fact, bright young people emerge. And our theme is a rising tide lifts all ships. As we make the school better for one student or a small group of students, we also make the school better for all students. Um, now, the school-wide enrichment model consists of three service delivery components. One of them is uh, assessment of student strengths. The second is curriculum modification and differentiation techniques. And the third are the three types of enrichment in triad, which I will cover in greater detail. Each of these three service delivery components are brought to bear on three school structures. The first one is the regular curriculum. We should be modifying the regular curriculum. Uh, the second is a series of special gatherings of young people based on interests, which we call enrichment clusters. And then the third is what I call a continuum of special services. It might be clubs, it might be after school programs, it might be uh, advanced uh, advanced courses. There are many different kinds of organizational plans. On the side of the model are various uh, resources that my colleagues and I have developed over the past 35 years to make implementation of the model easier. Uh, we've developed uh, staff development materials for teachers, curricular materials, assessment instruments. We have a summer institute. I know some people here have been to our summer confitude program. This summer will be our 33rd year. We've trained over 25,000 teachers since we began. Now, people have often asked me how I can summarize a school-wide enrichment model in a sentence, in one sentence, and that's very difficult. So I've designed this slide, which I hope will make sense to you. Um, this is your main curriculum. Uh, this is what you must teach. This is what the ministry says you must teach. This is what's in your textbooks. In the United States, we have book after book after book of standards by the government, and it says that these are the things that we must teach. 
The school-wide enrichment model is an infusion-based approach, not a replacement approach. We're never going to throw out what the ministry says we must teach. We're never going to throw out, in my country, what the standard says we must teach. So what we want to do is enhance that. So we're going to add some vegetables, and we're going to add some nice spices, and of course a turkey baster, and all of a sudden we have a much more attractive meal. It's much more intriguing, engaging, enjoyable to young people. And so this is sort of the way that I like to explain uh, what it, the model is. It doesn't say throw out what you're doing, but rather infuse into what you're doing the kinds of enrichment that I will be talking about. Now, our most recent work has been an electronic uh, internet-based program which you will see me demonstrate later, but to give you a very brief overview, one of the things that we do is we do a complete assessment of all four areas of student strengths. Most people think of student strengths just strictly in terms of achievement, but we look at interests, we look at learning styles, we look at preferred modes of expression, and um, we also look at their academic, uh, high levels of academic achievement. This results in a profile, which you will see later, and then a search engine searches through thousands and thousands of resources, online and resources that you can print, and it matches those resources to each student's profile. So this is true differentiation, true personalization of learning. There are other features in electronic portfolio, a thing called the Wizard Project Maker, which guides young people through what you will come to know as Type 3 enrichment, and many, many other resources. Now, moving on to the first theory, a broadened conception of giftedness. In my work, one of the things that I did was uh, do research. The conclusion that I reached is that there's really two types of giftedness. One is high achieving giftedness, obviously very important. The children who get good grades, who score well on tests, who go to school well. The second type, however, is somewhat the type that Her Royal Highness referred to this morning, and that is creative productive giftedness. The kinds of people that invent things, that become entrepreneurs, we'll see examples of that as we move along. The main part of my work related to um, conceptions of giftedness is called the three ring conception of giftedness um, and giftedness consists of an interaction between and among these three clusters of ability and the one that really fascinated me the most in my early research was the one in the upper left hand corner because it said that highly creative productive individuals come from the above average rather than just simply the superior levels as measured by tests. Obviously, higher test scores produce a lot. But there are many people, famous people, creative people, Nobel Prize winners, that were above average but not necessarily superior. The other two clusters.